So Cash Tiro, yes, believe it or not, has become one of, if not possibly, my most favorite Yu-Gi-Oh deck of all time. This is gonna probably get me some hate, but that's okay. No fancy intro today, ladies and gentlemen. I've had a heck of a day, but hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here. Be sure to smash the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that subscribe button so we can climb even further beyond the 1K ladder currently at 1,100 and what, like 18 subscribers? Like, y'all keep on killing it. Um, I also want to give a huge thank you to each and every one of you uh, for the kind words that have been said and continue to come in uh, even as I make this video on my community post. Today has just been absolutely rough. If you don't know what's going on, just go read the community post on the community tab on my YouTube page and uh, you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. But basically, um, I lost my part-time job today and I'm trying to kind of work things out. I may be able to work it out where I don't have to necessarily leave that job. I'll just have to leave the pharmacy department, which is where I was working. I'm a certified pharmacy technician for those of you who don't know. So I may be able to go into a different department. I just may have to take a really massive pay cut. Like that's... That's going to really hurt. Um, so I really do appreciate all of the prayers and support that have been said and continue to come in. But that's actually one of the reasons why Cash Tira has become one of my favorite decks of all time. I still feel like to this day that my number one favorite deck of all time is still from September 2009 format. And y'all who are OGs on the channel, you'll remember that I've talked about this before. But it was my Burial Dad deck. Now, to give a quick backstory on that deck to kind of set the stage for this video, uh, Burial Dad was a September 2009 format uh, deck that my dad actually found when playing one of the World Championships. I think it was the World Championship 2009 Stardust Accelerator game, uh, where he was going against someone online who was using this, what we call Burial Dad, but it was essentially a Dark Arm Dragon deck for lack of a better term, with like a zombie engine, with three burial from the different dimension and three necro garden with like three Mizuki and it also played Caius. And it played the good one ofs like Mirror Force Bottomless, things like that. And it was a hilarious deck because what you could do back then is like, let's say Gladiator Beast, like that was one of the good decks at the time. Someone might summon a Laquari and attack like direct. And if you have a necro garden in your grave, you could just banish it. And then like, let's say all three of your necro gardens are banned and they're like, oh good, I can finally attack direct, attack. And then you just go activate barrel from the different dimension, target three of your banished monsters, put them back in the grave. So you put all three necro gardens back in your grave, then you banish one to stop the second attack. I played that deck and I got so good with it and it would piss so many people off and it was just hilarious. I still love that deck to this day. And I remember my dad threw in a copy of Magic Cylinder because he's always played Burn. So we made that like a staple in the deck like that no one else was playing. And like it actually won me a lot of games. It was really funny. Uh, that is still my favorite deck to this day. Like I won, I think I won like my first ever, I won my first ever locals. Like I got my first ever win at locals with that deck. And it was just so much fun. And now Cash Tira, it's the same, but in a little bit of a different way because... You know, I I just love how Cash Tira plays. Like, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, it's just a, you know, brainless combo deck. All you're doing is locking out zones. But that's what I love about the deck. Like, there they have so many different combinations of cards that all tickle my fancy, for lack of a better term, as nasty as that sounds, that I just can't help but just fall in love with the deck whenever I play it. You know, you have Cash Tira Rise Heart that banishes the top three cards of the opponent's deck. Combine that with Diabolsis the Mind Hacker. Not only are you whipping out cards in the opponent's extra deck, but then you're also milling cards off the top of their deck. So any outs that they have in their deck that they didn't open with, you're potentially making them mill. You can also make them mill even more with tier element Cash Tira. Cash Tira, a Rise Heart, being able to suck up a banished card each chain, not just once a turn, but each chain. So if you have the Arise Heart established, you can summon out tier element Cash Tira, choose to make the opponent mill three. All three of those cards are going to get banished. And then you can just attach one of those to Arise Heart or attach one of your banished cards to the Arise Heart. You know, being able to have all of these different Cash Tiras on the board. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've had a board of, like, Cash Tira, Arise Heart with Ogre, Unicorn, and Fenrir. And just hoping to God that my opponent activates a monster effect so I can chain everything and just lock out, like, over half their zones in one fell swoop. You know, you have the zone locking, as we are just now mentioning. And to me, like, even though that pisses people off, the deck as a whole, Cash Tira, really is pretty easy to out. But, man, I feel like I'm playing with cheat codes. Like, it's so much fun. Like, 
I've always been one of those guys growing up that like, especially in like video games and the PS1 and 2 and especially GameCube days. GameCube is one of my favorite consoles of all time. N64 by extension. I always loved screwing around with cheat codes. Like it, it's just fun. Like there's no other deck in Yu-Gi-Oh right now that locks out zones and can just be so explosive and deadly when it goes first and potentially even going second if it opens correctly and is just able to break your board. And so, like, I'm playing a deck that going into the dice roll of game one against somebody, I feel like I'm already at the advantage because I'm playing with, like, a fucking game shark. Like, <laughs> it's just hilarious in that regard. For those of y'all who know about gaming and know about game shark and cheat codes, that should bring back some nostalgia. So, yeah, it just it feels like I'm just playing a totally different game. Like, I'm not even playing Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm over here playing, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! 3.0 and everyone's over here on Yu-Gi-Oh! 1.5. And it's, it's just a joy to me. Another reason that I really enjoyed this deck too is because yes, I have been going through uh, a lot of things uh, just personally. And because of that, you know, it, it has really hooked on to me as a deck. You know, if I'm having a rough day or something, I can cut on EDO Pro and I can just start trolling people with Cash Tira. You know, I've, del I've delved, I've dove in, I guess delved, I don't even know. I've put in so many hours into Cash Tira, just trying to perfect the deck instead of having to worry about whatever bullshit thing is going on out in the real world. And I can just focus on making the deck as best as it can be. I can focus on looking at other builds to help perfect my build and, you know, see what the community is doing and get feedback from like commenters on YouTube, from you, the viewer, and being able to not only make my deck better, but make myself as a player overall better. And it's, it's really fun. Like I remember when I first started going to like local tournaments and regionals and stuff, you know, like two weeks before the fusion deck name got changed to the extra deck, right when synchros came out. Um, that was when I went to my first locals and, you know, I would always net deck and people were always bad, especially back in the day were like, oh, if you net deck, you're bad at this game, blah, 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 blah. You can't just copy Jeff Jones build and expect to be good. But net decking is so important in the game because it helps you learn and it gives you a build that you can take and then choose like what cards to put in and take out based upon your play style. It gives you a starting point. You know, not everybody can just take a deck, like let's just say Sword Soul as an example, and learn to build it their way without like any other reference points. Like that doesn't really ever happen. They're going to reference other decks and things. You know, even if it's something like Mystic Mind Burn, like there were so many different ways to play Mystic Mind Burn. You know, before people started using Silent Wobby, they weren't even using that. They And before DD Guide, they didn't even use anything. They just used like maybe Planet Pathfinder, but then we saw people using DD Guide. Then we saw people go to Silent Wobby, and I think we saw some other card get used in the interim. But besides the point, you know, even a deck like Mystic Mind Burn, the point that I'm trying to make, has a lot of different ways that it can be built. You know, maybe you play Sales Ban and call Mystic Minds that Mystic Mind can't pop itself at the end phase. And so, you know, there's that innovation, for lack of a better term, even if it's like, you know, a Degenerate Burn deck or an Exodia deck or a Cash Tira deck, Sword Soul deck, Trap Tricks deck, what have you, there are ways that you can adjust the build to your own. I personally have taken MST TV's uh, Adventure Cash Tira build. Freaking love that build. Oh, mwah, it is so much fucking fun. And it's so explosive when it works. And I've actually basically created my own side deck and extra deck compared to what he did. You know, he was side decking two Dark Ruler. I'm side decking two Lightning Storm. You know, some of the ratios I've changed up for my play style. Um, I personally don't agree with playing two Scareclaw Cash Tira or two Tier Element Cash Tira. I like one of each. I feel that that's fine. I feel like you brick a little bit if you're playing that. At first, I wasn't playing Forbidden Lance. I was playing D-Shifter. Now I've cut the D-Shifters. I'm playing Forbidden Lance. You know, it's this evolution of the deck over time since it's came out that has just made me fall in love with the deck more and more and more. And it gives me much more appreciation too for people that have like fallen in love with Sky Striker or Branded or Sword Soul, you know, whatever. Because I understand it now from the deck building aspect where you're working and working and innovating on the deck, trying to make it as best as it can be and trying to, you know, innovate it to your play style and you end up falling in love with the deck. You know, it's kind of like a video game. The more time you put into a video game, the more you fall in love with it. You know, Octopath Traveler 2 is coming out tomorrow at the time you're making this video. And like I fell in love with the first Octopath. I put like over 60 hours into the game. I never did the true final boss because that shit is just atrocious. But now 
like I've already sunk like now four hours in the demo because now I've done like almost an hour on the PS5 and I did my full three hours on my Switch. So like, I'm just so excited to start playing the game. It takes me into this world and I get so just hooked into it. And I'm doing the same thing with Cash Tira, whether it's just trying to get away from the baby back bullshit of the world and things going on in my life and just, you know, trying to get through my, my VHL cancer treatment, trying to you know, get a job in my career field, being on TV, being in radio, trying to get back in the game. And it's it's a time that I think I will remember for a long time. Do I think Cash Tira should be hit? Yes. Do, is the deck tier zero? No, but it's extremely explosive and it's a high risk, high reward deck. And I absolutely love playing it. Am I going to get hate for that? Probably. But you know what? That's who I am as a player. And I wouldn't have it any other way. So guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video.